Scotland, which I thought was kind of odd, but it, it grows here quite well. It blooms in July and August in East Tennessee. The blooms um, are on a tall spike, like this, this picture here. It doesn't show the whole spike, but um, the blooms of the great mullion are yellow. Almost all parts of the plant are used. Um, they relieve, in the, in the past, they have used this plant for relieving cough, congestion, sore throat, as an anti-inflammatory, and it also has antibacterial properties. Uh, the habitat, it grows in arid, gravelly, sandy, or chalky soil of roadsides, cliff banks, and unused land. I'm sure you've seen it. Next. Oops. Oops. Lost it. Let me see if I can. There we go. Um, lamb's ear. So I was confused, and so it was great to do this research because I thought they were one and the same. Turns out they're not. Lamb's ear leaves are shaped like a lamb's ear. They just both seem to have that soft velvety texture. Lamb's ear is um, the um, I'm sorry, the um, Stachys byzantine is their um, what is the word I'm looking for? Latin. Thank you, Latin. Uh, they're a perennial herb. They grow in full sun or partial shade. They have tall spikes with purple flowers, not yellow. Uh, they prefer well-drained soil and they are a succulent, blooming in July and August in East Tennessee. There, the healing properties of this plant also relieve cough, congestion, sore throat, and anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. The next slide is buckhorn plantain. The Latin word is plantago lanceolata. Now there are many different varieties of plantain. Um, there's a wide leaf variety. Uh, I really tried to get um, pictures, my own pictures, instead of using stock footage. <clears throat> so this picture is from my backyard and uh, the flower is the stock footage. It's the narrow leaf variety. It grows in full sun, blooms in late spring, May to June, if you don't mow your lawn. <laughs> the flower spikes are small, yellow tinted. They're, they're kind of a yellowish, little, little white grayish color. Um, it's also known as English plantain or ribwort plantain. It likes fields, pastures, and again on the side of the road. The leaves are used for tea as a poultice, pulverized mixed with emollient like grease or rendered fat and used as a salve. Again, anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. Whoop, too far. Curly dock, Rumex crispus. It's a perennial flower um, with large leaves and they have curly edges. It is, uh, it likes dry, arid ground blooms all summer, May through August. It is edible and is full of nutrients. It's high in vitamin C, zinc, and beta carotens, but it is toxic to livestock. It's also a host for the Lepidopter butterfly species. It's typically found in areas where the soil has been disturbed along roadsides and around the edges of fields. If you're going to eat it, the recommendation is that you boil it and change the water several times to eliminate the oxalic acid in the leaves. But it does have a high level of iron, and in Western cultures, it's used to treat anemia. Oh, 
cottonwood. And you may you may think that these are all sort of unrelated, but I, I, I'm going to tie them together for you in just a minute. Cottonwood, Populus deltoides, also called a poplar tree. Its habitat is sandy riverbanks and bottomlands, and it has beautiful, large heart-shaped leaves. The average height is 100 foot average height and typically has a broad trunk and stout branches. It's fast growing, an average of five inches per year, and the heart-shaped leaves are smooth and plentiful. So you may ask, why did I select all of these plants? Notice the shelves are empty. There is a shortage of toilet paper due to the coronavirus pandemic. And all of these plants have historically been used as toilet paper. And here's my additional resources where I first got the idea. <laughs> 